Um, yeah, I heard you gave the magic word lunch, so I understand that everybody's very interested in listening some more while you're starting to think about food. Uh, but uh, it is actually three other things that I would like you to bring with you, uh, three thoughts from today, not only my presentation, but from all the presentations today. And the first one is then at green IT, that it is good for business and good for the environment. And that's why you are here. That's why you're here to, to look into this program. And uh, next message is then that uh, cooperation, that is the road to success. And uh, that's the focus of what I will talk about, uh, the experience that we have from the cooperation between Norway and Estonia, Norwegian companies and Estonian companies. And um, then I also would like you to be dreamers, to uh, be innovative, to think big and uh, go global because uh, all things you have heard so far, this is a, a global opportunity. And I think with good cooperation, you have got all the possibilities to, to fulfill that. Uh, it was said I'm working for Innovation Norway. Uh, Urmas is my name. And I'm uh, otherwise working then with Norwegian companies uh, when it comes to strategies when the Norwegian companies go abroad. And uh, I'm going to present a bit of the experience that we have from the corporations so far. And uh, I think that uh, it is very exciting to look forward to what type of cooperation will be in the future in the green ICT field. And um, I will look a bit about uh, how it's gone so far, uh, look upon what are the reasons to the corporations today. Uh, I will also uh, look a little bit on lessons learned because uh, uh, one thing is technology, another part is people, and if you're going to cooperate, then it's going to be a lot of people together with the technologies. And the uh, last bit is a bit, so uh, you are into green IT, you are into cooperation, you are into thinking big, what should I do next? So that's where I will end off my presentation. And uh, all good presentations need a graph, so I start with that one and will not then have more of them. Um, so what does this uh, show? Well, I just want to actually show that uh, it's growing. The trade between Norway and Estonia is growing. And just to look back at, this is Baltic numbers, but just looking at Estonia, looking at 2008, that was type of a peak year before it went down a bit again, and compare it to last year, then the, um, the trade between Norway and Estonia in 2008 was uh, 3.7 billion NOC Norwegian crowns. And in last year it was 5.4 billion. So the growth is, is quite big. Uh, and we also see that uh, Norwegian direct investments into Estonia is growing. And as has been said before, that there are approximately 400 Norwegian owned companies in Estonia. And, of course, the, the number of companies in Estonia cooperating with the Norwegian companies are even bigger. So it's a positive trend, so use it when you start cooperating uh, with this program. And um, so one thing is that it has been a growth, but uh, is it also giving something, uh, any value? And uh, in 2008, it was made a study by Deloitte that showed that 75% uh, of the Norwegian establishments, they are pleased or extremely pleased uh, with outcome. That means the growth, the profit, showing that uh, the cooperation between Estonian and, Eston uh, Estonian and Norwegian companies have been fruitful. So why shouldn't it be fruitful also in the, in the future? And then looking at the, what is the reasons to the cooperation. And I think it's, it will be changed a bit if we look at this program, but just looking historically. Uh, well, if looking from the Norwegian side, why the Baltics? Well, one thing is, of course, new markets want to increase sales. Um, some of your clients in Norway move to the Baltics, move to Estonia. You move with them here and find new clients. 
And then it's, of course, around capacity or, or lack of capacity in Norway, and it has to do with competitiveness. And, of course, uh, a big difference in, uh, in cost levels uh, has an importance in this. Uh, but I would also say that more important is actually uh, what Norwegian companies, how they perceive Estonian companies. Uh, and uh, the thing is that they, they look at Estonians as flexible and quick, um, being a very big difference uh, compared to doing, per, for instance, uh, business with China. It is close, it is easy to get here, the business culture is close, it is easy to understand, uh, you have the common goals of what you want to get out of the business. Um, and then it is, of course, the quality and the experience that Estonian companies have. Uh, so overall, um, that, that's a, a very good, strong image that uh, Estonian companies have in the eyes of the Norwegian companies, at least those who are already here. Um, so I would just like to add one more thing here in the end um, when talking about capital. So of course what the Baltic companies, the Estonian companies get out of this is capital. It's very nice that somebody buys something that you do. It's, it's kind of part of your business. It should be at least. Um, you get competence, uh, technologies. It's transferred from, from the Norwegian company to the Estonian company. And also you get new markets. Either you go and find them together or, or you get them through the context you have in Norway. Uh, but the, the new development is quite exciting is that Norwegian companies come to Estonia to look for investors. And it has a lot to do with the new economy, the new ways of thinking. And there, a lot of the Norwegian companies see that these type of investors are actually found in Estonia, which is based on the new economy. And um, so I think it's a quite nice circle. So I think that there is a lot of synergies, lots of win-wins in making this type of uh, cooperation. And of course, then it is the question of how to find this partner that you're going to do this great business with. And just last bit uh, comment is that I think that the focus of this program, uh, it's going to be, uh, I think, much more focused on both sides coming with uh, capital, investing into the development, both are coming with their knowledge, their technology, competence. And I think it's uh, a big part of this pro um, program is that the cooperation is going to be on the same level. Well, um, these are uh, some of the tips that we give to the Norwegian companies when they look for partners in Estonia. I think that uh, you should not ask for less when you look for partners in Norway. But first thing is that it takes time. This is a quite huge investment, perhaps not in money, but in hours. Um, it's not the question of finding one partner, it's uh, the question of finding the right partner. And, and I think that this is a very important step for success, that you actually go out and find the right partner. So uh, why not go for the best in the class? Look at the references. Uh, the Norwegians are going to do the same about you, so prepare yourself. How are you going to present your company? And uh, international experience. This is about going global. You can solve a problem in Estonia, or in Estonia and Norway, but it's even better if you find a solution that you can actually go further abroad and take the, the global market with it. And then it's, of course, all the thinking about the risks. So you're aiming for the stars, but at the same time, thinking of, you know, how to handle uh, the bad times if they would occur. And uh, I think that partnerships all the time goes in cycles. So you will always have good times and bad times. So if you're prepared for the bad times, you can go back into the circle and go for the good times again. So it all has to do with good contracts. Um, it's, it's going to be cross-border cooperation, so there are different laws. There are different type of certificates, uh, all these things. Uh, this is good that you are prepared when you are meeting uh, your potential partners. And um, then I think that we have used the world, uh, word supervision. 
uh, that's perhaps a little bit negative. It's more perhaps to, to, uh, to have the finger on the pulse, knowing what is happening, not getting surprised if something is going wrong, that you are proactive, that you are uh, engaged in the partnership. Uh, so you don't let things go so bad that you can't, can't get back from it. Um, so you invest a lot of time to, to find the partner and get the partnership going, and, and then you need to f even invest more time into keep it going. Um, I think that when you're working with Norwegian companies, uh, the Norwegian companies are very much value-based. Uh, for Norwegian companies, it's also very important with openness, transparency, sharing. I think that uh, one thing that is always important when you're dealing with a new market is that you build up your new local network. So I think that one way of showing trust is to, to invite your partner to your network, open them up, uh, to your contacts uh, and actually be a really good partner. And um, then it is also about clarity and setting the, the right expectations. And, and taking one example of the internal processes. Um, I think that the common thing after a, having a meeting, a Norwegian and Estonian, and then they say, great, we start cooperating. And then the Estonian person goes home and starts working 12 hours a day to do the solutions that you discussed. And then uh, the Estonian is contacting the Norwegian one. First thing, so I didn't get any, get any emails from you. What is happening? You know, I have also been working a lot. We have actually now got all the people that they are saying yes to have a meeting on Friday, discussing how to do things. Um, so understand that the ways how you progress uh, in the development, in, the, in going for the innovative new solutions are different in different companies. And it is very important that you explain it to the other side. This is how we do things. Uh, I'm not calling you every day. That's not why I, I still like you. But these things takes time and I will call you once a week. And um, then it is also important to know who is in charge of what. So you have a meeting, both say yes. Some has the right to say yes to everything. The other one says, yes, this is a good solution technology-wise, but then it pops up later, but the economy guy said no. So understand who is making what decisions and also who has which competences to speed up the process because you're going to have a deadline on this program. And then there are the myths, the, the similar, similarities and differences. Um, I actually crossed out the examples of myths. I think it's, it's just disturbing the picture, but I think it's very good to know that there are such. So you listen to me now. Don't take what I'm saying that being the truth. That's just, uh, I'm just giving you a variety of, of situations that perhaps may happen, but perhaps don't. Um, and be aware of that on the other side, the person perhaps have a wrong image of you that you have to work on and change. But otherwise, the, the business culture is very similar. Uh, and especially if we look at the, the, the Nordic countries, looking at the Baltic states, then Estonia is the one that is the most close to the way of doing business in Norway. So it's going to feel very comfortable doing business. But uh, then it is also, of course, important that you don't kind of block out uh, the potential uh, black holes in the road. I think uh, just giving two examples of, of comments that we get from, from Estonian companies and Norwegian companies is that uh, when working with Norwegian companies, uh, Estonians notice that they are very much value-based. To just give examples, it has to do with uh, equality. It's, it's both men, women, but it's also, is it boss, employee, or is it boss, employee, or is it boss, employee? Um, I think that um, the changes of, of the, how the structure is in Norway can be quite different of the structure of the business in Estonia. And um, then the, the comment that we get a lot from the Norwegian companies when they have found a really good partner in Estonia is that the Estonian companies, that Estonians are so hungry. They want to do things. 
They want to do things all the time and right away. And sometimes the Estonians run a little bit too far ahead. But I think that the most Norwegian companies who, who have this type of good cooperation, they find it is a very good motor in the cooperation. So, so uh, if you are in a, in, a, in a company that you know you are running really fast, then, then tell it to your Norwegian colleague that, that uh, they have to catch up. Or sometimes you just take a break and see that they, they see that you are up there and they are coming as soon as they can. And then it's, I would say, then the big one. It's, it's actually not a very big problem uh, looking at the long term, short term uh, look at things. But this is the, way, um, the place where the most problems occur in the communication because you think that you are looking at things the same way. Um, so it has to do with this. So the Estonian ones, a uh, company goes back and doesn't get a phone call in two days and think somebody has forgotten me. Uh, and from the Norwegian side, it's perhaps more that we will need to have the meeting, we have to discuss and go further. And I think that from Norwegian side, I think that Norwegians who have done business with Swedes would say that the Swedes, they are the really slow ones and we are the fast ones. But I think that now when the Norwegians meet the Estonians, then they understand there is somebody who's a bit faster than us. And then it is also the planning bits. Are you pl planning one week ahead, one month ahead, three years ahead? I think that uh, traditionally then perhaps Estonian and Norwegian company has a bit different type of horizon of how far ahead you're planning. And uh, there are actually no other cures to this than to talk a lot, uh, explain a lot, ask a lot of questions, uh, so this is all something that you have to deal with, with having a good open communication with your partner. So this goes both to the Norwegians and the Estonians. So looking at the experience of what Norwegian companies have so far been doing in Estonia, um, then one part is of course the energy and environment sector. And a lot of things have been happening in Estonia. It has to do with EU directives forcing some movement, but at the same time giving some money. So you get things going, opening up the energy market, building new lines to Finland, uh, energy savings, building new energy plants, closing old ones. Um, so a lot of action in Estonia. And on the Norwegian side, um, that's a, a nation with very long experience of working with the energy sector. Uh, so I think that um, you have both got very good different type of experiences uh, with the field of energy and environment. And looking at um, some examples of what has been done so far, so it's within biodiesel production, wind power, biogas, solar cells, hydropower, power exchange. I think when you looked at the, um, the video before, then we had the two persons, the Estonian and Norwegian side, between uh, Nelia Energia. That is actually a very good example of uh, a fruitful uh, cooperation. When uh, the Norwegian company comes with their know-how, the Estonians come with their know-how, and now they have then built up this company that is actually a driving force in their sector. So cooperation gives big results. Um, in environmental technology, then these companies are working with uh, making uh, biogas out of uh, wastewater sludge. Uh, it has to do with recycling, uh, any, uh, it's with the waste management, green production. And um, I think that Geir already took some of this, but if you look at, if this is from the original Innovation Norway presentation of what, what we are doing in Norway regarding energy and environment. So it's quite many sectors that we are dealing with. But perhaps uh, some of the more uh, interesting ones uh, have already been mentioned, like smart grid, sustainable buildings, uh, including then smart IT uh, solutions and IT tools for building these buildings, um, energy efficiency, uh, sustainable transport, it was also mentioned um, um, intelligent transport systems Norway, 
a great organization to, to find partners in if you are looking for some development in that area. And green services and then perhaps Nude Pool Spot could be a good example of, of a good new green service. Uh, but it is, of course, also other areas. Uh, service sector has been mentioned as a big sector, both in, in Norway and in Estonia. And looking at what uh, Norwegians are doing in Estonia, then it's, of course, it's a lot of service centers. Um, and it's moving more towards uh, quite uh, more complex services. It's not just answering phones, but it's, it's quite more of the, the, the back office functions. And it's also IT development done in Estonia. And as mentioned, from Estonian side, you have the whole e-Estonia, X-Road solution, all the public services. Uh, and I think that the Norwegians that were with me yesterday at the demo center, I think that it was a quite nice wow presentation of what Estonia has today. Um, so I think it's it's this is. The, the, the service sector, it has a lot to give, both from the Norwegian and Estonian side. And um, here we have some examples. It's a couple of uh, service centers. We have uh, IT companies like uh, Atea and Logica. And uh, then also one example of IT development is Indico Systems. Um, then they are doing a secure digital recording systems for police, for courts. And they are then doing the development in Estonia, but selling it globally. So here it also again says that they have found a very good formula of using the best of Norway with the best of Estonia, and actually also getting some Danes and some from UK, and then doing it uh, into a global success story. Maritime sector is also mentioned as one of the strongest uh, Norwegian sectors, and I think that's why this could be a very interesting sector also um, for Estonia is, of course, that uh, uh, the growth of traffic in the, in the Baltic Sea, and it's an uh, environmentally vulnerable area, so something, of course, needs to be done there. Uh, and one area that we have been looking into is the using of LNG in the, as fuel for shipping. And just to, to give some examples of uh, Norwegian companies active uh, in the Baltics uh, and then have the LNG theme, then we have Hög LNG that are then going to provide uh, an import terminal for LNG in uh, Lithuania. We have uh, a great cooperation uh, in uh, Fiskestrand BLRT that is involving at least Norway, Lithuania and Estonia. Everything from developing uh, a project of, of designing a ship until producing then the, the biggest LNG ferry in the world. And then we also have DNV that um, has to do with certificates, but uh, as I see them in the LNG field, that, that they are a really heavily knowledge-based company with a lot of know-how when it comes to LNG and a lot of other topics. So it's a, a great partner for us in uh, Innovation Norway also when it has to do with areas that are complex and um, um, a little bit too complex for me at least. And then a big area for Estonia is of course these th uh, things behind me here uh, called trees. Uh, but uh, more, I know that uh, Norwegians are also interested in trees as firewood, but I think that for Estonian side it of course has to do with a lot of other things like prefabricated buildings, windows, doors, floors, furniture, and of course also taking this into the next step, it has to do with uh, the smart buildings, smart homes. Um, I know that, that a lot of thinking in Estonia is that so we have the building, we are selling it to Norway, it's, it's I think the major export uh, article from Estonia to Norway, but why not also have a bit more smart things that they want in Norway in it. So I think it's has a good potential of, of using the experience of the trade today to come up with the solutions for tomorrow. Just to recap, the, so I'm, I'm from Innovation Norway and, and, and my job is a bit to say that uh, cooperating with Norwegian companies is really good for you. So just, just to, to repeat, so why is it so good to cooperate with Norwegian companies? 
Well, um, it is a, a, a fairly competitive and, and very technology-oriented market. So you'll find a lot of heavily technology knowledge um, having Norwegian companies. And in Norway, you have also very active clusters. So it's not only companies doing cooperation with the companies, it's also companies then uh, getting in all the municipalities, they are getting all the universities, all the development actors. Uh, I think that this is a pro uh, process also in Estonia with uh, building clusters, but I think that the cluster bit, it's, it's a lot you can learn and a lot you can use in building and having also a broader network when working with partners in Norway. And as I said, with the energy and environment uh, sector, they have a lot of experience in this uh, area. And you will also like the, the, the um, clusters within uh, intelligent transport, uh, with its smart grids and so on, that they have actually been working with very narrow topics when it comes to uh, greening with IT. That that's could be very useful for you. And then it is also uh, a focus on doing international business. And, and again, this is a very good partner to have uh, when you are going global and taking over the whole world. So, the next steps. So, um, you are here because you have understood that now green IT, it's both good for the business and it's good for the environment. So, then this is a good program from you. Um, and then do you have thought that I can get further to having partners, both to, to share the investments into development, share cap, uh, competence, technologies, going out for the new markets. So what's next? So then you go into the, the nice homepage, Greenit, uh, at uh, Enterprise Estonia. Uh, you have the partnership form. You write in everything there. And then it ends up at Enterprise Estonia's table and sooner or later on my table. And from me, it's going to end up uh, at the table of uh, a lot of different actors in Norway. And hopefully that will trigger uh, the cooperation or at least trigger the first contacts where you can build up uh, potential partnerships uh, with companies in Norway. And also for the Norwegian listeners out there, you should do the same when you're looking for partners in Estonia. This is our team. Uh, it is uh, Urmas, Tina, Anneli, Anneli in Estonia. And then we have uh, Inese and Sanda in Latvia. And they are working with a green industry innovation program in Latvia that has not got the green IT focus. And the same goes with Lithuania, where my colleagues are Rita and Orinta. So now you know who we are, and you know what three messages I wanted to give to you. Green IT, good for business, it's good for environment. Cooperation, it's the road for success. Be dreamers, be innovative, think big, take over the whole world. And with that I say, thank you, tak, aita.